Here in our final example for the chapter four material, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a few things together from chapter four and from chapter three, just so that we can uh, kind of show the, the greater you know, combination of stuff. Most of our previous examples here from chapter four have been really um, hyper specific. So when we look at the um, conditional operator, there's nothing else going on there. When we look at the else if chain, um, we didn't use else, you know, as a catch all until we specifically demonstrated the catch all. So this one is going to tie together a couple of disparate pieces from four, but with a callback to chapter three. And that's why you see here on line number four, the IO manip, because what we're going to do is use set precision and show point so that we can show points and precision. So a couple of things to take notice of here. Number one, this is wholesale out of what we did in the chapter. Um, and that's just so that you can see how this will run. We have constant doubles and constant ints because we do not want either by mistake malicious negligence or other, we do not want to reassign values here to our, you know, our doubles and our ints for choices and for cost amounts. So the best way to do that is to put constant in front of that const, because that's going to be a compilation time error if we try to um, change those values. So as we go on here, this is what I wanted to demonstrate um, as part of chapter four, outside of just the switch statement, which we'll see here, is the idea of a menu. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and we're gonna talk about this. Um, for us to take input from a user, the there are no rules there. There's nothing that says, if I'm going to ask a user about a senior citizen membership, that they have to type in senior citizen membership. There's a couple of problems there, right? Number one, it's annoying because as a typist, I don't wanna type. Um, number two, it's prone to mistakes. What happens if you know I'm having a particular uh, 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 Lee, difficult typing day, you know, if I'm on a keyboard that I'm not used to, if I haven't had a cup of coffee and I'm kind of tired and I don't feel like typing and I'm not going to be accurate, that's going to be a problem for you as a developer. What happens if they say senior, S-E-N-O-I-R, senior? That's wrong and it's hard to correct from there. A menu system here takes what would be a complicated typing input, and it converts it to an integer. Hit one if you want standard adult membership, two for child membership, three for senior citizen membership. So when I hit three, I'm not a senior citizen, but I might be one day, uh, and hit enter, how many months? I'm going to put in 12, that's for one year. And so there are my total charges. So if I'm going to run this again, instead of me having to type standard adult membership, I can just hit one. So look at the reduction in time it takes to make that entry. That's tremendous. Look at the reduction in the probability of error. Now we're taking, you know, all of those spelling mistake issues out and I'm distilling it to a simple number choice. One. Um, so if I'm here for 12 months, you can see $480 it pays to be a little bit older. So that's the first idea here is the menu. Take what it is that the user can input and boil it down to just a couple of hard to make mistake with choices. So as we continue down through here, we have the idea of a switch statement. So instead of having if else if and else, which we could certainly do here instead, we would use instead the keyword switch. So it's a different kind of a, um, a statement block. So first and foremost, there's our keyword switch. Inside of the parens there is what it is that we are going to make that choice against. And here, 
It's the reason I use the word choice. It's choice. And you'll number, or you'll you'll notice rather, for choice, here's my choices. Adult choice equals one. Se or child choice equals two. Senior choice equals three. Quit choice equals four. So what we've done there is we've assigned values to those variable names. And you'll notice here in my case, so each one of these cases is a different number. Adult choice, this maps to one. Child choice, this maps to two. Senior, three. Quit choice, four. So what we have here, so we could swap out one, two, three, and four here. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and run. So uh, my standard choice for how many months, that didn't change the output of the code any, did it? No, but for the next developer in the chain, if I come back here and undo those, the case for adult choice is perfectly clear the moment they see that, aha, adult choice, instead of what's number one again and having to go over there and find, oh, the, the selection number one maps to standard adult membership. So this is actually a really elegant way to kill two birds with one stone. Number one, it's easier for the user to determine what's going on. And number two, it's easier for the next developer in the chain, who may also be you in a couple of months who forgets about this, to be able to, at a glance, determine what is happening here with that switch statement. The next thing to notice about the switch statement is each one of these cases is begun and ended with a set of curly braces. So all of this in between that statement belongs to the case for, or the, yeah, the case for adult choice. All of this here from 50 to 55 belongs to child choice. Now, you'll notice inside each of these cases, we do have this new additional keyword, and that is break. What we need to do is include the break because if we do not, what happens is as follows. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the break out of here. On line 47, on line 54, on line, we'll leave 61. So I'm going to enter child, or senior choice over here. So I'm going to enter number three. For how many months? 12. Total charges, that came out the way we expected it to because we're all the way down here and we are we broke out of this case. So that means that when I entered senior choice, number three, this case was evaluated first and it did not evaluate as true so we didn't enter into the statement block. This case was evaluated second. It didn't evaluate as true so we didn't enter into that statement block. This case was evaluated third, it was true, so we entered into that statement block, but at the end of the block, we broke out. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that break statement and run it again. So this time around, three, for how many months? 12, and you'll see total charges, but then what happened? Program ending, this case was entered into also, this is what is known as falling through, that once a case is evaluated as true, unless you hit break, all of the rest of the cases are going to evaluate as true as well. So to prove that that's the case, I'm gonna go ahead and copy break from here. I'm going to put it back in on line 61 here for the senior choice. Um, but I am not going to include it in adult or child choice. So let's prove that we fall through all of the rest of those. I'm going to put in a standard membership for how many months? 12. Your total charges are 480. But wait, what is this? For how many months? That line is actually right here on line 50. That's what we're seeing execute here. For how many months? 12. There's my child membership for how many months? 12, there's my senior membership, but I did put that break back in because I didn't want the quit choice to come out there 
as well. So that break is important. What that will do is ensure that only the piece of logic that you want to execute on in the switch statement is executed on. So we'll just demonstrate that that really is the way this works. I'm going to put those break statements back in here. And because that space, there we go, looks a little nicer this way. I'm going to run it again. And this time, if I do put in my number one standard adult membership for 12 months, we're going to get the correct execution of the logic that we expected. So there is a lot here to chew on. There is the idea of a menu taking and reducing the amount of input that a user has to do into something that is easy to enter and it is easy to use logic on. Number two, we've got the idea of the switch as opposed to an if, else, if, else chain. And here in the switch, we can use Boolean, which would go really pretty quickly, right? Um, we can use um, integers. We are not allowed to do math in the, um, the evaluation of our choice here. And frankly, you are not allowed to use strings there as your choice. That's another place where if we are expecting string input, it is best again to use a menu because we can take that string input, we can reference it as though it was an integer like we did here instead of a string for standard adult membership, we simply have an integer one. And that's something that we can check against here inside of our switch statement. Each one of these cases represents a, a decision uh, those are all encased in a statement block, so an opening and a closing curly brace. And inside of that, you do want to remember to include your break because otherwise you'll fall through. The first um, condition that is evaluated as true will trigger all of the conditions after it to be evaluated as true as well. But look how nice and condensed this was. If we had letters of the alphabet, for example, could you imagine how many lines of code that you would need to have for an if, else, if, else chain? This is way more condensed. It's much easier to see. It's much easier to manage. And as a developer, easier to see, easier to manage is in your best interest.